18 years. I've been on air 20. She works tirelessly, even back at the time when I was only on one FM station here in Austin. Uh, she would uh, come on the broadcast a few times a year to promote the ideas of liberty. And it was 50 years ago this year that she published her best-selling book, A Choice, Not an Echo. And that's being republished now. We'll uh, give you details of that information, but phyllisschlafly.com, eagleforum.org. You can also find some of her work at wnd.com. She's been a national leader of the conservative movement since the publication of her best-selling book, A Choice on an Echo. She's a constitutional lawyer uh, and a lot more. I'm not going to try to get into um, everything that uh, she's been involved in, but uh, she served as a member of the Commission on the Bicentennial of the U.S. Constitution. Appointed by President Reagan, she has testified before more than 50 congressional and state legislative committees on constitutional, national defense, and family issues. And if, 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 if somebody like Ron Paul, you could say, is the kind of father of the libertarian constitutional movement, Phyllis Schlafly is like the mother uh, of um, the constitutionalist liberty movement. And we would be in deep trouble without her. Uh, if you read the, her work going back over 55 years, almost all of it has turned out to be extremely accurate. And she's got a syndicated column as well, the Phyllis Schlafly Report. That's in over 100 newspapers. Uh, she's got uh, her daily radio commentaries on over 600 stations. Uh, and uh, she's got Eagle Forum Live on over 90 stations uh, and also heard over the Internet. So be sure and go to phyllisschlafly.com, eagleforum.org. She understands like Charlton Heston did and so many others. This is a full-on war. And I'll play the clip later for her. I, I discussed it a lot in the last hour. I played the clip of Ezekiel Emanuel last year admitting they want to wreck health care in America, basically Cloward and Piven. That's the socialist plan. But the new clip of uh, one of the chief architects, Jonathan Gruber, heading up Obama's uh, Economic Commission uh, advising uh, on Obamacare, saying that they lie to the public with lack of transparency being key to fooling stupid Americans and stupid voters. And he was there teaching other academic media how to lie. And, and it's just simply incredible that they say they have the moral high ground. Everything they do wrecks things but gives them more power. And then they admit that they lie and deceive and cheat and death panels now. Bill Gates admits that. Uh, I want to say that low-level leftists mean well or want a free lunch. It varies. But at the top, these are not leftists. These are deranged control freaks, more akin to what you saw in the French Revolution. The only behavior I've seen like this is, that, is in the French Revolution. If you study the degeneracy of the Jacobins and others, I don't want to go into a history lesson here. Phyllis Schlafly joins us. Thank you so much. I know you want to get into 2014 elections, what you think that really signified, the landscape. Is it a big political realignment? I certainly think so. Uh, can we defeat the establishment Republicans that will try to play ball with the, with the same crony capitalist? Looking forward at 2016, what do you see in your crystal ball? We'll discuss it all today and the republishing of your book, Phyllis, but first off, we commend your 55 years of work for liberty, and uh, we'd like to get your take uh, on my little uh, rant uh, discussing the arrogance uh, that we're seeing out of the so-called left right now. How would you characterize the mental state of these people? Well, thank you for all the kind words you said, Alex. It was good to be on with you, and, and you are right, and uh, they deserve a rant because they they have really uh, brought this country down the wrong path, and the majority of Americans admitted we're going in the wrong way. And I think what they really want is power and money, our money, and uh, they they want to uh, make sure that the government has control and make the decisions for us. When I grew up, I guess it was years before you grew up, but we had a country of middle class families who had intact nuclear families. That is, the mother and father uh, were married to each other and raising their own children in one household. And now, uh, that's just the minority of people in our country. And But the nuclear family was the self-contained economic unit. They spent their own money, made their own decisions, decided how they were going to raise their children. And now we don't have that anymore. And you find... Uh, uh, the liberals who 
uh, want to give us uh, government control of everything. You know, this speech that Obama made up in Rhode Island a, a couple of weeks ago, which he said, we just shouldn't allow women to have the choice, choice, he used the word choice, of taking care of their own children or uh, being in the workforce. Because we want them to be in the workforce, so they pay more taxes, so we can provide them with government child care and raise their children. And so first they sell the idea that a woman's not worthy if she doesn't have some job paying all these taxes. And great, a woman wants a career, go be a constitutional lawyer, change the world like you've done, more power to them. If a man wants to stay home with the kids, more power to them, or wants to go out and you know work in a factory or build a factory. I mean, that's free will. But the demonization of a maternal role, and then now saying... Women just shouldn't have the choice. They, sh they should be made to go out into the system and let the state raise the children. That's what MSNBC has been saying in promos now for two years. Uh, every week promos they're saying your kids belong to the state. Uh, they're really coming out of the closet, aren't they? They certainly are. And, uh, of course, uh, when you go in the workforce, you're going to pay taxes. And that's going to give these bureaucrats more of your money to spend and tell you how to spend it. Here's Melissa Harris Perry uh, in a MSNBC promo saying that uh, we got to get past the idea that your kids belong to you. So part of it is we have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. Once it's everybody's responsibility and not just the households, then we start making better investments. Well, that's real straight to left-wing heresy, yes. It's uh, just uh, absolutely wrong. Uh, everything we know means children do better when they're raised by their own parents. In fact, you know, we poured all this money into public schools in an attempt to close the gap. Those are the magic words between the high-achieving and the low-achieving students. And they used to think the real cause of the gap was poverty. And now recent research shows it's really not poverty. It's whether or not the kids are raised by their own mother and father. And, and those who are are going to do better in school. And, of course, they knew that in the social engineering, and that's why they've worked as hard as they can to break up the family. They know full well what they're doing. It's premeditated. What do you make of more and more Democrats and leftists coming out and admitting they lie and admitting they deceive and admitting they want to wreck the economy so they can be in control? Uh, I mean, for me, that is criminal fraud to have people involved in Obamacare coming out and saying, we lied to Congress, we lied to the public. Uh, I mean, that's just outrageous. Well, you know, this case that the Supreme Court has just taken, it's really pretty funny. It's about Obamacare. And uh, when the Obamacare said uh, that you only got the subsidies if your exchange was set up by the state, the words are very clear. They're not equivocal at all. And uh, they want people to, but, but most of the states didn't sign up for it. And so the people want to get the subsidies anyway. And they're trying to get the Supreme Court to rewrite the legislation. Now, our Constitution says all legislative powers in the Congress. It's very clear. There's nothing uh, equivocal about it. And uh, the Supreme Court is going to take that case. And the question is, are they going to stick to the way it was written or are they going to rewrite it? Well, there's a real power struggle in American intelligentsia and the elites itself. For so long, the Republican blue bloods have worked with the left in this radical transformation. Now that we see that it's designed to wreck the country and fold us into global government, a lot of elites um, who, who aren't completely criminal are now trying to put the brakes on things. I know you have a lot of high-level contacts uh, you know, inside the system. Uh, do you think that's an accurate statement that there is a, 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 a serious relooking at things inside of the establishment and that a lot of people are realizing that we better turn back now? Well, I don't see much evidence that it's the establishment, the big boys, the Chamber of Commerce types who are rethinking it because they like it uh, when they bring, when we bring in cheap labor so they can uh, raise their, their stock prices, uh, but, uh, value can go up. Uh, but I think the American people are catching on that most of the people who are coming in are uh, willing to work for lower wages, and uh, they were asking me to comment on these states that passed the minimum wage uh, law in the other day. Uh, but but it's, it's not the actual amount of the wage that is uh, attracting them. The ones 
the, these people who come in are working are willing to work for much lower than the minimum wage. And they genuinely also get welfare on the side as a supplement. Yes, they certainly do. That's right. And so I, I think the American people are waking up, and uh, uh, the big question now is, are we going to let uh, Obama get by with his executive amnesty? which is he wants to bring in more cheap labor. And, of course, he's bringing in all these diseases. We've got the uh, children dying with this new kind of a TB disease that's being brought in by these uh, unaccompanied minors who are coming in and trying to go into our schools. And, uh, and our children are being sacrificed, regardless of what color, on the altar of globalism. That's why they couldn't control the borders or planes with Ebola, because they don't want to ever send the message that having a border might be something you might want to have. Phyllis Schlafly, stay there. We're going to come back, and I want to get into 2014. How big of a wake-up was it? 2016, Obama's executive power grab. Will the Republican establishment try to block it? But I want to agree with you. It's the grassroots that's waking up. Not even so much the elite, but I am seeing a lot of signs that there are a lot of people in the establishment that do see now that we're coming to the end of the road and that globalism is not really a good idea. And so they may want to change sides basically right here at the end so they don't get the blame. We'll be right back. Stay with us. So I want to just give her the floor right now to get into her view on 2014 election. What does it really mean? What does she see looking forward into 2016? What are the big issues? Phyllis? Well, the big issue in, in the 2014 election was the Republicans getting control of the Senate so they can stop o Obama from putting any other judge on the Supreme Court. Uh, if he put one more justice on the Supreme Court, I think he would rule this country for the next 30 years. And I believe that the Republicans should make a decision that they are not going to confirm any more judges appointed by Obama, because he's already done uh, quite an effective job of packing the federal court system with left-wing uh, judges. Sure. Shouldn't they block his uh, uh, the, the, the people he wants for the attorney general? Absolutely. Absolutely. If they have, they ought to have some fight in them. Uh, if people spoke, and they should carry out the wish of the people. If Obama said his policies were all on the ballot, and okay, we'll accept that. They were, and the people rejected them. That's right. The Democrats and Obama said this was uh, basically a referendum. It was a major political realignment. I mean, the, the, the Democrats haven't been this week uh, since 1920. Uh, I mean, this really is a sign that they're in trouble. Uh, it certainly is, and so it's a good omen for two years from now. And I hope that the Republicans uh, can stay on the ball and, and be a fighter. Uh, let's not have any of this talk about uh, bipartisanship and trying to make a deal with them. Uh, use our majority and restore some constitutional uh, rules. Uh, the idea of letting Obama make uh, new laws with executive amnesty and executive action is just unacceptable in a free country. What's going to happen if... Boehner and McConnell ride herd on the good Republicans, there's a lot of good ones in there, and they don't repeal Obamacare, or they let Obama sign a bunch of executive orders. Uh, what's the word you're getting? Are they planning to slap him down? Because Obama seems belligerent. He says he's going forward. Uh, yes, he is. And he, uh, he seems to think that he's some kind, of a, some kind of a king who can do whatever he wants, and they shouldn't let him get by with it. Uh, of course, uh, Congress has control of the money, and when he said uh, he won't close, he won't close our borders to people with the Ebola. He wants six billion dollars so he can set up a plan to stop Ebola in West Africa. Now we didn't elect him for that, and uh, Congress holds the purse strings. They should, they shouldn't give him the money. Wow. Uh you know, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense. And now one of the big issues that the Republicans are playing coy about is this uh, new tr uh, giving Obama fast track. Now, that's giving him power that they never gave to uh, Clinton or Bush or any of the previous presidents, which means they can, can go make a trade agreement in secret without consulting anybody, with bypassing Congress, and just make it. And it becomes a, a treaty with all the... 
advantages and constitutional protection of a treaty. And of course, that's that Pacific Trade Partnership that's got 30 parts. Only one part's been leaked, and it gives control of the internet over to the UN. Basically, uh, this is this is dictatorship by shadowy boards. And yeah, the Republicans are talking about handing that to him when he's just been given a mandate to do nothing. Well, we shouldn't let him do it. We should kick up a fuss. And I'm sorry, we've got. To, uh, well, now listen, Alex. You know that the big fight is within the Republican Party. Oh yes, it's between the establishment, the people who like to think they're the kingmakers of our land, and the grassroots. And that's why people need to read my new book, A Choice, Not an Echo, because that tells you about all the shady deals and shenanigans that they pulled in the past to give us this uh, series of losers. We used to call them Me Too candidates. Whatever the Democrats said, the Republican candidate would say Me Too. That's right, and it's an updated and expanded 50th anniversary issue. It brings it up to date. Tell, uh, tell us about the book before we go to break. Well, the original book I published in 1964, and of course I couldn't get any publishers, so I did it myself, uh, and sold three million copies out of my garage. And uh, that is what created the conservative movement, because it told people that we had a real uh, conservative to support, Barry Goldwater, and we could do it. And we did nominate him in the convention, despite everything. And then, of course, the... Uh, the big boys uh, smashed him in the in general election, but we got our reward a few years later when we elected Ronald Reagan. And if we hadn't created the conservative movement with the Choice Not an Echo in 1964, we wouldn't have gotten Ronald Reagan as the greatest president right. of the 20th century in 1980. Phyllis, stay there. This is so important, folks. What one lady did with a book, changing history, you could change history, too. Stay with us. We're on the march. The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. The Trilateralist Commission is international and is intended to be the vehicle for the multinational consolidation of the commercial and banking interest by seizing control of the political government of the United States. The Trilateralist Commission represents a skillful, coordinated effort to seize control and consolidate the four centers of power, political, monetary, intellectual, and ecclesiastical. They've got most of the churches. They've got things by the Federal Reserve. They've got the Democratic Party and most of the Republicans. They've taken control of the universities. That's from his book from U.S. Senator from Arizona, Barry Goldwater, with no apologies. And I know folks that knew Barry Goldwater, just and of course Phyllis Schlafly knew him well. What a great guy. How wonderful it would have been to have him as president. Reagan had great rhetoric about how, you know, you did build your business and freedom's great and everything else. Uh, politics got away from him in the Congress and some bad things happened. Uh, some things I disagree with under Reagan and Ron Paul criticized those as well. But compare Ronald Reagan to Obama who says you didn't build your business and Hillary came out and said businesses don't hire people. There's a war against reality. We're going to talk to her and walk through this new edition of her book because it's very exciting. And I want to hear some of these stories. <sighs> then we're going to open the phones up for your quick question or comment, whether you agree, disagree, whatever, for Phyllis Schlafly. The toll-free number to join us on this live Monday edition is 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. Thirty-one questions or comments for Phyllis Schlafly. Again, I'm your host, Alex Jones. Before we go any further, we've got a whole bunch of new shirts made in America. The fabric, the printed in America, everything, the cotton's grown in America, have come in at MadeIn1776.com. Now, I'm wearing right now one of the first that came out last year when we launched the Made in 1776 line. Uh, but uh, this is the Join or Die shirt, one of my favorites. But we've got some of the new ones in the Camo, Molon, Lambe, uh, and others. And we've got the 50 caliber 1776 bottle breachers that just won Shark Tank last week. We're going to get those uh, one of those Navy SEALs that owns the company on in the next few days. And the point is, we know stuff that's interesting. We've got uh, some new belt buckles coming in that are Molon Labe that will sell out quickly that are made in America. And all of this funds the InfoWars operation. We're not like MSNBC. They got stimulus money or NPR that gets $400 million of taxpayer money every year. We are funded by folks buying the great products at InfoWarsStore.com. 
or Maiden1776.com or the great supplements at InfoWarsLife.com. Now, InfoWarsStore.com takes you to a directory of all those sites and shopping carts. It's basically like a whole shopping center right there. Uh, but when you buy the products from us, it, it, it funds the operation. You're shopping with the good guys. On top of it, the proprietary supplements like DNA Force, Survival Shield, X2, uh, Oxy Powder, all of it, is proprietary to the site and to our developer, Dr. Group. And you've heard the incredible reviews out there. So InfoWarsLife.com. And here's the good news. The products are very popular. Here's the bad news. We are about to sell out of Survival Shield. We are about to sell out of Lung Cleanse. We are about to sell out of DNA Force, Oxy Powder, Super Mel Vitality, basically everything. Right as more colloidal silver is set to come in next week. And right as one of our new products is set to come in next week. We actually have some of it in, but not enough to even offer it. Uh, so if you want any of these products, InfoWarsLife.com. Also recommend the Great Longevity line of products discounted at InfoWarsHealth.com. The Beyond Tangy Tangerine, uh, the Pollen Burst, uh, the, just, just the, the, the Alex Pack, all of it at InfoWarsHealth.com. You can find links there at InfoWarsStore.com as well or 888-253-3139. You can call, ask about any specials, and our great crew will answer your questions. I want to thank you all for your support. Going back to Phyllis Schlafly, of course, of the Eagle Forum. Phyllis, talk about some of the history. Talk about Barry Goldwater. Talk about the new edition of your book and why it's so important for people to get it. Well, uh, when I brought out a choice, not an echo, it had this enormous sale. And what it did was to inspire people to believe that the grassroots could win against the establishment and nominate a real conservative. Now, let me remind you that in that, in that time period, presidents were supposed to come from New York, Pennsylvania, or Ohio. And Barry Goldwater was from Arizona. I, I didn't know anybody who had ever been to Arizona. There was no baseball team that was farther west or south than St. Louis. It was so far away and so distant, and yet we picked him, and we made speeches for him, made speeches all over the country for him, and uh, we it did get him nominated. Of course, they clobbered him in the election, but we stayed together as the grassroots conservative, and uh, then came Ronald Reagan, and we got him elected, and he had two wonderful presidencies, uh, not perfect, but certainly better than anything the Democrats had to offer. And then they kind of disintegrated after that, and we had people who pretended to be conservatives, they really weren't, and uh, we've got to revive them. And that's why I come out with my 50th anniversary edition of A Choice, Not an Echo. Now, it's not a rewrite of the original. The original's in there just as I wrote it in 64. But what I do is to bring it up to date with the shenanigans and the behind-the-closed-door uh, deals that were made in all the Republican National Convention after 1964. Brings it right up to date. And I'm telling listeners, you can't be a player in the presidential election next year unless you know the history, unless you know what's in the past. Because we want to pick somebody who's uh, picked by the grassroots. We, we, we don't want somebody who wants to bring in all this cheap labor and uh, export our, our good jobs abroad to cheap labor countries. And uh, uh, so it's a big challenge, but you need to know the history in order to get going in the battle. I agree. Phyllis, uh, the founder of the uh, Eagle Forum, Phyllis Schlafly, is our guest. I want to bring up some inside baseball stories here. I've been told by high-level folks that at the nomination process uh, in 19, uh, for the 1980 election, and I've seen the speeches and seen video clips where Ronald Reagan was criticizing George Herbert Walker Bush and saying he's a trilateralist, he's a globalist, basically going with a Barry Goldwater line of reality, and then he was taken behind closed doors and said, we're not going to back you if you don't put Bush in here, who was a Rockefeller East Coast uh, Republican, and then you have the Clinton dynasty and the Bushes working together. I was always told at the time that Bush had basically fallen down on the election so Clinton could get in. Now they call him another son. That's basically been admitted. Now we're back to more Clinton and Bush dynasties. Well, uh, well let me say, Alex, uh, 
the the story of what they tried to do to Reagan when they realized he was going to be nominated uh, is told in my new book, A Choice Not an Echo, and it's quite a behind the behind the scenes story. What they tried to do was to make Gerald Ford co president. And when Dan Rather accosted me on the floor of the convention, he said, what do you think about this, Mr. Schlafly? And I said, well, it's completely unconstitutional. You want to give the vice president control of the budget, the money, uh, our, our sovereignty issues, uh, our tax issues, and leave uh, uh, President uh, Reagan with nothing but the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Well, let's stop right there, because this is such a big deal. You're confirming what I was told when I was, you know... A kid, and, and then when I've talked to high-level Republicans that were there, you were there on record on national television. You were behind the scenes. The, the establishment was so afraid of Reagan that they were trying to get him to agree to to to, to be a titular head uh, and, and try to change the Constitution illegally inside the party. Break down exactly what happened. It's sensational. Well, uh, tell a story at my new edition of A Choice, Not an Echo. But they wanted to give all the real power to the vice president, who would be Gerald Ford. And the reason they wanted Gerald Ford was that a man, he was the man who took his orders from Henry Kissinger. And and uh, they thought that that would enable them to run the country, even when even if uh, Reagan were elected president. And uh, that is why uh, Reagan was pounded so heavily by them that he called George Bush at 11.25 that night, and I was there in the convention hall, at 11.25 and said, get on over here. Bush was already in his pajamas. He had given up any hope of being on the ticket. And Reagan brought him over and introduced Bush because he was afraid he couldn't get through the night. You know, Walter Cronkite from his skybox had already announced that, uh, that Gerald Ford was going to be the co-president and have the real power. So the elites were just struggling to get their people in, and so George Herbert Walker Bush was seen as a better person for him to choose than Gerald Ford. Oh yeah, Bush, sure. But you know, the first uh, George Bush was the was the choice of the establishment, no question about that, and the grassroots for, for Ronald Reagan. And then we had enough delegates to nominate Reagan, but the the establishment. Uh, the, the so-called kingmakers cooked up this deal by which they could thought they could take the power away from the president and give it to a vice president they could control. It's amazing, though. So we learned that Ronald Reagan really was anti-New World Order, anti-globalist. Uh, oh, sure. And, but then he gets shot. And then he goes in for treatment and comes back out. I, know, I mean, I know you were in both administrations. What can you say about what happened inside of those administrations? Well, he, Reagan wasn't perfect, but he certainly was better than anybody else in sight. And he was the choice of the grassroots. And he did not turn over all his power to, uh, uh, to uh, Ford or anybody else. And, uh, yes, he made, he made a number of mistakes that we could discuss. But, however, on... On balance, he was the best uh, president we had. In You're the saying, bottom century. line, he was a good guy that loved this country. He did. He did. That's and a big difference from Obama, who obviously wants to destroy it. Well, he obviously doesn't love this country. He doesn't want to think we're better than anybody else. And, and of course, we are. That's why everybody in the world wants to come here. Well, our ideals were better, and we certainly were exceptional. Now we're an exceptional paradox of just horrible socialists and crony capitalists and then all the other free market folks making this country go. Why do you think the Democrats are so arrogant now and admit they're lying and, and admit they want to wreck the economy and saying you didn't build your business? I mean, that's a way to discredit themselves. Are they that disconnected? Well, they, they have a lot of rich people. And uh, they've always had more money than the grassroots uh, movement. Oh, yeah. And uh, I, I think uh, they were you know, they're doing a bit of gloating, but they, uh, they, they simply want to continue to control things. They always have. And I'm telling the people listening to this program, we beat them in 1964 when we nominated Goldwater, and we beat them in 1980 and 84 when we nominated Ronald Reagan, and we can do it again if you'll get with it. Read my book so you know the shenanigans they pulled before, and we won't let them get by with giving us another loser for president this time. Well,
Well, they I've never seen the establishment this scared, and I've gone back through the oh, history. Uh, and and well, I want to see if you concur with that. They are really scared of the Tea Party insurrection taking over the Republicans. They are absolutely lining up against it. But I'm seeing a lot of good signs of major talk show hosts realizing that and now saying that. And, and what do you expect them to pull now to try to get a Chris Christie uh, or a Jeb Bush over a Rand Paul or a Ted Cruz? Uh, what do you expect them to pull, A, and then B, uh, as probably the top expert on the inside stuff that goes on, you know, seeing it for 50 years, Phyllis Schlafly joins us, head of the Eagle Forum. Who would you like to see as president? Well, I'm not picking my guy at the present time, but, but I can tell you it's pretty clear that their number one guy is Jeb Bush. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, they, they believe that the, uh, the, the British system of primogeniture, they want to take the next one in line. And of course, the next one in line has been one loser after another. I don't believe the American people are willing to elect another Bush. Yeah, we rejected royalty in 1776. We did. And uh, so, uh, but the, the grassroots can do it. So get on out, join, and, and realize that the fight is in the Republican Party. That's where the important fight is. Now, we lost several good candidates, including my own candidate for state rep, by the libertarian votes that took more than his margin. Uh, by which he lost, and uh, it maybe it maybe you wish we had many parties like other countries do. I don't wish that, but some people may. Yeah. But we have a two-party system. And as well, I clearly one said, one said you go to war with the army you have, not the army you wish you had. Well, well, well I agree. I, I vote libertarian when both candidates are bad. But I said in this election, if there's a Tea Party patriot running against a Democrat. And, and even if they're not perfect, you got to vote for them because this is a referendum on tyranny. We have to bring them down. We have to bloody their nose. We have to make them pay. We've got to take yeah, we over. We did a pretty good job. Yeah. We did a pretty good job. I was really proud of it. We didn't get everybody, but we got an awful lot and a lot more than they expect us to get. Well, Phyllis, it's just amazing. Uh, I, 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 I want to have you back on again soon just to talk about the book for a full hour. I want to go to a few few phone calls. Yes, because I've got so many good inside stories, and, and it's, up to, it's up to date, and you've got to have the ammo if you're going to go to battle. Wow. It's, and it's... the ammo is uh, a choice, not an echo, new 50th anniversary edition. Well, I want to talk to the publisher and maybe carry it at the InfoWars store as well. I can't wait to read it. I mean, I read the original book, but I haven't. That was like 15 years ago. I want to read uh, this updated, expanded uh, version. Phyllis Schlafly's our guest. I want to go to a few phone calls here when we come back from break, but maybe we'll skip this network break for time. But, Phyllis, anything else you'd like to add uh, to the viewers and listeners out there? Well, what's in the book is the inside story, like that 1980 behind-the-scenes story of what they tried to do with Reagan. It's just simply incredible, and it shows you how these people operate, and they've got uh, the power and the clout, and they, uh, they do a lot, but uh, I think people are waking up to that. Uh, you know, at the present time, what they're trying to do is to give Obama uh, more power than the previous president ever had. They want to give him fast track so he can make any deal with foreign countries and, and uh, not even let Congress know, make a deal and make it into the law. It's called fast track. Why would we give him any more power? I, it blows my mind. That's right. And in, in, in fact, I've seen some Rand Paul statements that where he's like, we need to get trade done. And he needs to clarify that because that's what the other Republicans are saying. It means give him the power. He's been given a mandate to be indicted, uh, to, to be impeached, not a mandate uh, to expand power. The mandate is repeal Obamacare. Phyllis Schlafly, what's going to happen? If the neocons and rhinos are able to suppress the liberty movement in the Republican Party, and if they don't repeal Obamacare, if they don't uh, shut the president down, if they let him shut down more power plants, if they let him have executive amnesty, I mean, if they do that, what's going to happen? Well, I'm making up my mind that's not going to happen. <laughs> and uh, we've, we've got to educate the grassroots and tell them that they have the power if they will only use it. That's, that's what we're up against today. Because a lot of people, you realize that not many people can remember 1964 now. And uh, uh, we, we need to tell them that uh, the grass, we, we are a country of we the people. Well, I'll say this about Barry Goldwater. I mean, nobody was talking about New World Order and trilateral commissions and, 
you know, just all this stuff back when he was. He was doing it when it was like speaking Martian because he really cared and was warning people. He was being the opposite of a politician. He was being a statesman and studying the two. Uh, though Reagan was probably m more well-spoken and maybe better looking, uh, Barry Goldwater would have been an incredible president. Uh, yes, he was an authentic conservative. And uh, that's what we want. Somebody who really cares about this country and believes our country should be the best and the biggest. One of the things that I have uh, been responsible for repeatedly putting in the Republican policy platform adopted at the Republican convention is that we need military superiority. It's not enough to be just strong. We've got to be the biggest and the best. And that's the, the best key to peace for ourselves and for everybody else. Well, it would be if we didn't have neocons and Obama launching all these wars. That's why people want to cut the military. My concern is they're trying to twist the military into a domestic force with all those memos to go after the Tea Party. Do you find that chilling? Yes, and I also find it chilling that they're putting women in combat. I don't have any respect for the military who send women into combat. It's kind of like if you, you hear noise in your house in the middle of the night, and the husband turns over and says, Honey, you go on downstairs and see what's that going on. Well, it's a war on reality. I mean, men can't make babies, and men are ugly, and women look good. I mean, I mean, I mean, well, there are differences. The job of the men is to protect their family. Exactly. It's men's job. To, I mean, men, 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 at least the men I know, uh, want to protect their family. Sure they do. That, that's why uh, recent, uh, recent figures show that men who have children earn more money than men who don't. Well, that's just because they work harder. They've got a motive. Well, the minute my wife had our first child, my son, all the th it just clicked. Everything in me, I suddenly wanted to be more successful, wanted to work harder, got grew up a lot, and it's biological. Yes, and <laughs> we need to encourage that. And of course, you know, you're fighting the feminists. But you need to read my other book, "Who Killed the American Family." And you'll see the damage that the feminists did. I have read that book. If I want to have you back on in a few weeks, if you'll do it just on that book as well. Phyllis Schlafly's our guest. Randy in Texas. Randy, uh, you're on the air. Go ahead. Thank you, Alex. Uh, Phyllis, you are God sent. I went to a program the other evening where John Danforth was the speaker. I know you know John yeah. probably very well. Yeah. I'd like you to speak about him a little bit, but let me just tell you one thing that he said that was very disturbing to me. He told me, point blank, that his wife campaigned and raised funds for Mark Pryor in Arkansas. If that is going on, Republican to Democrat, something is grossly wrong in this country. And I'd like you to address what you believe that uh, Mr. Danforth's position really is on the Republican Party and conservatism in general. Uh, well, it's not surprising because we in Missouri, I live in Missouri, uh, consider him part of the establishment crowd. And this uh, fight we've been talking about in the National Republican Party, between the establishment and the grassroots, goes on in a different state. And in Missouri, uh, Danforth is definitely in the establishment crowd. Now, I'm happy to tell you that in the last election for Missouri State Chairman, we, we elected a grassrooter. We elected a real conservative. And, you know, it's kind of funny. M Missouri has a pretty, pretty slick system for uh, electing the state chairman. It's kind of like the way they elect the pope. They had a secret ballot, and somebody counts the ballots, and uh, Ed Martin won by about three or four votes, and then they immediately take the ballots out and burn them. That's the way the Pope, they do for the Pope, you know, and the smoke goes up, and then the people know there's been a new Pope. Well, anyway, we got a conservative, a non-establishment guy, and you can do that in your state and get your grassrooters uh, elected as delegates to the Republican National Convention. Very exciting. We're almost out of time. Thank you so much, Randy. I'll see if Phil's can do five more into overdrive. Paul Watson's coming well, on overdrive into the next hour. I got Paul Watson coming on with huge breaking news. But I'm trying to get as many of these calls as possible. Uh, I think the Democrats have jumped the shark in that they just openly say we're criminals, we're liars, ah ha ha. I believe they've gone insane like Nero. And uh, we've got a real chance to beat them now, folks. They've, they've had so much power that they've acted like lunatics, and the Republicans that have worked with them are going to be exposed. If we take this initiative, I believe we can take the country back. Phyllis, what do you say to that?
Yes, I, I do. I absolutely do believe. And not only that, we must. Our, our future depends on it. Let's go ahead. Go to my website, eaglefarm.org. Let's go to Patrick in Texas. Patrick, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Alex. Uh, I was a uh, pleasure listening to you. Uh, hi, Phyllis. Hi. Uh, I, I was a fan of Reagan when I found out that he tried to get rid of the Federal Reserve. And I think that's why they tried to murder him, you know? And the IRS. Yep. Yeah, and the IRS. And also, um, as far as, you know, businesses creating jobs, the one thing that I think about is the public. You know, their demand for a product, and then the banks allowing the public to get money in order to make these products and actually start entrepreneurship. And that doesn't happen. And, you know, that's the biggest enemy we have are the banks. And, you know, well, the, the central banks that are waging war on the regular banks, I agree with you. Phyllis, who is the biggest enemy in corporate America? That is, I, mean, I mean, you mentioned Chamber of Commerce, all these groups. The, the unions vote for open borders. They vote for NAFTA and GAD. I, I mean, it's just all these special interests are controlled by who? Well, I don't know that they're all controlled by anybody, but we certainly, uh, the, all these groups are pushing for open borders, and we shouldn't let them get by with it because the majority of people don't want that. And what, what they just want is the cheap labor. That's what it's for. And we should uh, reform the laws that are encouraging businesses to send their good jobs overseas. It, it's just awful. Free trade is such a, uh, such a deceit. Yeah, because they ride it one-sided. I've got a little five-minute segment here coming up in about a minute at the break. Can you do it? If you can, I've got one more question. No, no, I, I, I have to go. I have another. I understand. I know you're, you're a hard worker. Well, then here's my question. We'll have to take calls another time. Can't feminists now see that what they were sold as feminism doesn't empower women and has actually really screwed up women's position and, and everybody's position? I mean, isn't feminism in trouble? Feminism is in big trouble, but we can discuss that the next time I come on your show. All right. Well, thank you so much uh, for joining us, Phyllis Schlafly. Okay. Bye, Alex. All right. Very interesting lady, folks. I'm telling you, she really is at the heart of what you see with the Tea Party, Liberty Movement, you, you name it today, uh, battling uh, the Republican Rockefeller uh, Blue Bloods. Uh, and, I mean, they would have totally taken over if it wasn't for folks like her. All right. I'm going to go to a few of your calls and miss talking to her when we come back with Paul Watson with Breaking News.